Recording is in progress. All right, let's start. So we have April 11th, and this is a KCP community meeting. And we have three topics. Last mm -hmm. second, I checked. Yeah, MJ, you have something to say about webhooks and about all this. So. Yeah, that's a my discussion, general one, like uh, I know that we have multiple admission like, mutating webhooks. We are why in a core or basically vendor then or global ones. But I was thinking, is there any way now programmatically without forking adding a global mutating mutating or validating webhook to the system? I don't think. So is this hey David? Is this something we might want to support? Or like you can add validating mutating webhooks to the each and every workspace. But an example, if you want to validate something in a global state, is this something we want to do? So I think it makes sense to have that in a central place like uh, per shard. I mean, this is a question, right? Per shard is pretty easy. We have other things which are basically coming from the system admin workspace, like policy, airbag objects. We could have admission there as well. So this would be like if you create this admission in the system admin workspace, it would be maybe with special annotation and it would be global. Yeah. I think that could work. Like the main use case I want to solve is when uh, it works per shard, something like water checking, resource checking. So when somebody tries to create a new workspace, which is already in within the workspaces, you basically validate and if it's per shard, yeah. you just do it. Oh. I would be hesitant to do it in a non sharded way. Like, imagine you could basically say, here's a webhook in some workspace, and this is basically shared across all shards. But then you get the question about permissions and uh, security, like escalations. I don't think we want to go that route. But in system admin, it's basically system level, right? Yeah. No, I think it makes sense. Like, and after that, if the author is calling some external service, centralized one from each and every shard, that's it, implementation detail. Like, if you can validate doing a remote calls. OK. I think that answers my stuff. If I have time, I might kick off some, try some experiments, and kick off some documents for that. So. There's already some way which finds admission webhook uh, configurations for bindings. So it looks into the cache server. So I think we have wiring where we, we might be able to plug in, like provide more webhooks, uh, some kind of informer interface. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But look for that. And this might be another source where webhooks come from. Okay, I'm gonna check it out. It's we're gonna add my backlog. Okay. Next one is so we got Oracle Cloud account. So we got place where we can move our CI, like manage Kubernetes cluster. We can add some Argo CD or Flux and start deploying something like a shared KCP instance from master, like live testing plus playground. So I think accounts were sent to you, Stefan, Marvin, and me, and we can add more people if needed. So if people want to have access, let, let us know. An idea is to start building some shared infrastructure and maybe move CI, CD when we get, if we're comfortable with the setup. So any volunteers to take this on? 
I, I can take care of adding a new cluster to our for how to move the jobs over there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if we get your cluster, like I was thinking just to spin off some simple infrastructure as code boilerplates to provision those things and take it from there. Well, what do you use for secret management? For now, I was just thinking simply, like, for our shared secrets between the contributors? Yeah, because um, I'll post a link. If you make a PR to this one password um, repo, they'll give you uh, open source one access. So then you can have your shared passwords there and give people certain access. Oh, nice. We did. We got. We figured it out from the CNCF. They told us this, and then so we got key native on it on there as well. That might reward. Fine. I was thinking going a simpler way: get grip, uh, send the files, and then get and share the key. It's, What's good about this? It will do two-factor as well. So if there's a two-factor prompt, you can set that up. Okay. Just one for I don't I don't work for one password. <laughs> okay. So that's it. So basically I think once we get some time I can start kicking off things. An idea long term is to have a said a playground where people can log in with OEDC, get a short lived uh, workspace, play around and it gets purged. Sorry for my my. Um, you might have said this. Is the Oracle Cloud stuff just for testing, um, or is it for moving the prow your prow instance to there? I think we might want to try to move it, like to run our prow there, testing plus playground. Okay. I think that's it for me. Stephanie, uh, you're the third one on the list. I asked in, in Slack yesterday also about OpenAPI because some people internally they wanted to ask for OpenAPI v3 spec and didn't get anything. And I asked in our Slack whether this is supported, and the answer was yes, but I don't think it is. So the, there is a change uh, in our fork against the uh, open api v2 uh, controller for cids to make it cluster aware it's probably andy who did that at the time but the v3 i think is newer than that so it didn't exist at the time so there's nothing you get an open api v3 schema probably or you get it like discovery worked uh, i checked that but it's it's just static it's the one for the native resources so what we need is um probably some dynamic, semi-dynamic computation of the spec. V3 is easier because the specs are, are smaller, so everything is by group, group version. And um, so my, so I want to change that. I want to add that. And uh, my approach and uh, yeah, feedback is welcome. Um, I'm copying over the the controller from API extensions API server because this is wrongly factored, but it's it's pretty small. It's a super small controller. I copy that to KCP and I do changes which um, compute for every CID it sees, and this includes the uh, shadow CIDs for for the bindings. It will um, yeah basically extract the Open API v3 schema for that CID. And then we com uh, we dynamically compute, like we merge the CIDs in a workspace when there's a request. And I don't think we have many um, different combinations of CIDs or bindings in workspaces. So we can probably just um, use some kind of caching, like some LIU caching or something like that for the combinations which are requested and uh, compute that, cache it in memory and just return it live from, from, a, from a handler which uses that cache. And it uses a controller to um, to get the, like the first CID specs. That's the approach um, I tried to implement it. 
So it will not change the cube fork. It will just uh, add a small controller plus a handler, which does emerging and caching. And follow up of that, we, we discussed uh, at KubeCon already, V2 is pretty much deprecated in Kubernetes. So V2 is, is, is harmful because it's big, like it has all resources, uh, all native resources in Kube. And uh, whenever one CAD changes, um, everything is recomputed and it's super slow. So upstream uh, made everything lazily computed. So if there's no client for V2, it's not computed anymore. And kubectl is also updated since 130 or 129 or something like that. So normal kubectl um, apply invocations will not ask for v2. So the, the plan is to to basically get rid of v2 in KCP and completely use v3 only. And with that, we can get rid of some patches again in API extension API server. So that's a side effect. I think that was the original plan to wait for like v while v2 is dead and they want to move to v3, but I understand your change will bring it forward. Yeah. And that controller will be in a core, basically. That's in KCP. Yeah. And it, it, it's simple, it's just uh, watch the CIDs and call some open API builder, so it's not. A lot of code. Yeah, I think it makes sense. And there's a um, there's a follow up PR which might connect to that. So uh, number one, did um, virtual workspace implementation which delegates to the workspace. So when my code is in, his code will delegate to to my code and just. Uh, Use the same data for the virtual mm -hmm. workspace. No, I think that overall sounds good. My only thing is we we kind of use that uh, Open API v3 carrot to push our toes to rebase to one fifty. Yeah, I think that uh, okay. There must be more carrots. I hope than just Open API. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it's independent from that. That's true. Yeah, that's all about OpenAPI V3. So Hopefully note, coming soon. When did, does the pre-base, when the master branch opens? I didn't check, but my, my plan is to start any day. So I might have started already if this OpenAPI topic hadn't popped up. So. But I think it's time. It doesn't matter whether master the master branch opens uh, this week or next week. We have to do some work anyway, so we can start now. And I, what I, I mean, we can switch to that topic. So I, I will take the PRs which we already um, rebased some time ago. Christoph, you had one, right? So one of the PRs, and I did a follow up, I think, and. Um, I mean, this can, the rebase can only be done by one person and hopefully it's not too complicated. The challenge will be to make them smaller and maybe to pre-review. So we have to see which capacity is there in Kubernetes for reviews. So anything we can make simpler for the Kubernetes reviewers, and this is probably Jordan Digit mainly, because he has most interest in getting those things right. So make it more obvious that the PR is correct. That's basically the challenge. We have, to, we have to see how this how this works. Like splitting up a PR and getting in a part of that might be one approach. Let me know if we can help in any ways. Like I'm kind of have a feeling I'm limited yeah. in how much I can help us then just as long as something is obviously code move, it's easy. 
if something is uh, obviously changing and it can even be just order, for example, order how you uh, instantiate some things. That makes it more complicated. Anyway, um, that's something we should quickly start after this topic. David, I see your pointer on the agenda item. You want to tell us? Oh no, I don't. I don't have anything. But if there's nothing else, should we call it a day? Short meeting, forty minutes back. Just maybe few up updates so controller runtime example i started refactoring that so thanks for the reviews as discussed in a slack we started moving stuff into the main repository stand of example one so i need to go and adjust the comments for that i think like it looks quite okay to be honest like way way more manageable in my opinion so that's one there is an enhancement for mounts i still need to adjust comments for that so that's still like we've been merging some of the proof of concept code for the mounts, but more things will uh, um, more ideas are there. So I'm trying to retrospectively put what's already in the code and what what out there into that enhancement. So if you have any comments, let me know in that document. And I'm still late waiting for my lifecycle plugin to be enabled. What is lifecycle? Uh, the to lifecycle all PRs and all issues in our repository. The Prow lifecycle oh, plugin. Prow, oh, okay, that's the context. Everybody's looking at Christoph, I think. Yeah, yeah, basically. Come again? Sorry, I wasn't listening. I was taking something in stack. There is this third point that other business opens floor. Where is lifecycle plugin? Second. Oh, it really caught me off guard. Great. And this is about uh, closing old issues, right? That topic. Yeah, yeah, basically to enable in the prowl to to close all the issues and PRs, rotten and close. Didn't I enable that? Let me check. I think I didn't we already have that even configured. You can take offline. If not, I can I can do it quickly after the meeting and then just. Thank you very much. Yeah, I added a fourth point here. Uh, please take a look on this uh, PR, which adds uh, controller runtime enhancement. So it's just uh, the markdown file. There's a second PR for myself. I can link it there as well. And so there is a controller runtime meeting. It's happening every month, and we missed it, I think, last time. It was in the beginning of April, and I remember right. I think it's the first Thursday or something like that of every month. So this is a PR. And ask uh, here for the for the group is basically if you have connections to anybody working on controller runtime, please share the PR, like the enhancement especially. Uh, this continues work from from Vince. Vince was part is part of controller runtime, so he, he implemented that. And there, it's linked, I think, in my PR as well. So it's replacing some other old request, yeah, 20, 2000 to 27. And there's discussion already, but we should uh, try to, to yeah, ping the people and get feedback, maybe before we have a public meeting. So anybody who has contacts, please use them. I think I might meet one of the maintainers this weekend. This would be cool. That could work. 
share the idea. Um, I, I, I know that, um, so I tried to, um, yeah, the, the, I mean, take a look on the goals there in the, in the uh, enhancement, the motivation and the goals. The, there is one maybe controversial topic whether um, when you see a new workspace in our case or a new cluster uh, in the general, uh, general uh, controller runtime run, run case, you can either copy basically the whole controller and start a new virtue and basically do this management by workspace. Or you can have one virtue and many workspaces, but they all have their um, requests in the same queue. And the later is what Vince had proposed. And in the discussion of his PR, there was a discussion whether we should maybe copy actually this builder for controllers and run that per workspace. But I don't think this is what we need. It might be okay, I mean, for, for a small scale, like um, run a controller against 10 contexts and it doesn't matter because um, resources don't matter. But for our case, we want one joint queue, I think. Christopher, for you, um, if this is something which comes up, just a big one. I would, I would worry about a single queue because if you have, um, like, you, you might want tenancy, right? Yeah, tenancy you get. Like, um, by default, every reconcile, so it gets a request, and everything should be scoped to that tenant where the request comes from. That's the default. So there is no, I mean, uh, if you ask for the cluster for the current request, you automatically get the same tenant. So everything is basically just in one tenant. Oh, I, I, just, meant like, I just meant like the queue being shared, essentially like one, if I create like one tenant creates many, many, many resources and floods the queue, yeah. then, then it can degrade service but, for others. But that's the point. If we imagine we had multiple controllers and they will at least, I mean, they conflict or they, they hit each other um, in client side throttling or in server side throttling. So at some point, this will happen. The question is where? Super early, super late? I, I think for I me, think it'd be useful to have optionality here. Like, hey, if I. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Like, single work queue would work for like testing, but eventually, uh, a certain scale, I might want to like shard off a tenant from, from yeah, a tenant. Maybe tenant is a wrong word. Yeah. Because uh, a tenant is sounds some, something very big, right? But here, it's a workspace is usually small. I mean, the, the systems you build on KCP will have many workspaces. So I think this changes um, the argument. I see. Okay. Because there are not many requests coming, like there are not hundreds or thousands of objects. But it's a valid argument. Right. I mean, tenancy and fairness and so on. It's a good point. So, yeah, I can awesome. leave that. Is that is that a discussion happening on twenty seven twenty six, or is that just uh, twenty seven forty six? That's uh, enhancement. Oh, I see. Okay. So I would suggest to yeah to start comments there okay yeah uh, the pr is basically the yeah the the proc for that the implementation okay yeah i'll comment there copying versus a single instance like i think if there is a pushback that we copy things instead of using a single one i think we should take it it's like one of those get a precedent in. We mm -hmm. know the bottlenecks in. We know that somebody will run into a throttling problem, into the scaling problem. But if we get a precedent in, if we can change later. If we, yeah, may if maybe. If we block it out now, saying like, no, that doesn't scale for right. I think like if we should say copy, let's copy stuff and they make it copying one because this is not going to work. I think we should take it. I would still prefer the one global instance too, because we clearly know where will be our bottlenecks on our end. 
but this will force people to start thinking about multi-cluster management and these set up challenges will come to, to horizon automatically. Yeah, I mean, let, let's see where the discussion goes. I, I, I'd like to ask for having control over that, so. Yeah. Should we think Warsha and ask when is the next meeting week meeting up? Yeah, it's in May, probably early May. Yeah, it would be good to get into the calendars so we're not slip again. Cool. Okay, so let's make sure we don't miss the next one and. And in LinkedIn, we have no new issues, and I think most of the PRs has been addressed, and they are waiting for the authors to address things. Any other topics, discussions, questions? All good. No, I'm going once, going twice. Should we cut it shortly and go enjoy the sun? Three of the four screens.